What's going on, arcade nerds? Um, lately, I've been populating brand new reproduction boards. Um, for example, just recently, I got uh, two blank quantum boards and two blank major havoc boards. Uh, here's a board I designed myself and had a guy uh, make for me. Here's a bunch of, uh, of um, prototype uh, Desbaz um, high voltage boards. Um, they ended up not working, but I wanted to buy them so I could hack them and use them. Um, and for example, here's a reproduction Omega Race board uh, that I have almost completely done. But anyways, <clears throat> the reason I figured I'd turn the camera on is I, ne I need to go order a bunch of decoupling capacitors. So, if you don't know what decoupling capacitors are, maybe you can learn something in this video. Okay? Now, a decoupling capacitor, uh, have you ever noticed on a, on a PCB, there's tons of little capacitors everywhere, okay? And they're usually on the power rails between your 5 volt and ground, okay? Well, the reason why is because these chips take, take a small amount of power to switch. You know, in other words, when, when, uh, when the chip is turning off and on, the, the outputs is drawing some power from the rail. And uh, so, um, and you know what, here, let me do it, let me try to do it visually, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's pretend this is your power rail for the 5 volt, okay? And this is your power rail for the ground. Well, in between that, you might have a chip. And over here you might have another chip. Now you may think, well hey, this is a solid length of wire connected directly to the power supply. How can these chips draw enough current to put a ripple on the power supply? And why do we need more than one? Why can't you just, be, after all, all these capacitors are just connected to the same wires, right? In fact, you could even look at it like this, as, as many schematics even show it. Well, the reason why you need more than one of these, and I'm, I'm going to try, try to explain what it's for, <clears throat> but you can't picture these, the power rails, as a dead short, because it's not. Um, there is there, there's amount of resistance between that copper wire on your circuit board. So what you should imagine that as is imagine your your want your power rails is big is a big long resistor. Okay? So let's say that's your plus 5. Let's say this is your negative 5. Or your ground I should say. Now, in between, in between there, there might be chips. Let's just make a square for a chip. Okay? There could be a chip here. But, um, uh, there's resistance between here and here. So there's a possibility of a voltage difference between this side of the rail or that side of the rail. So, um, that's why several of these decoupling capacitors are required. Often, on some electronics, there's a decoupling capacitor for every single IC. Um, <clears throat> not in this case, but often that is the case. Um, and, and, and the reason why, the reason why those decoupling capacitors are there is because if this IC pulls the voltage down, it could possibly uh, alter the voltage on the next IC. So, for example, let's say you have a chip that is that would normally go low at a certain it would, would, would normally be high but if there's a voltage drop in the system that high could be read as a low because its available voltage was lower does that make sense so what else can I talk about okay as another example I want to explain why decoupling caps are usually placed as close as possible to the chips. And believe it or not, some IC sockets have a decoupling capacitor built into it. Why? Because it's so damn close to the chip. Okay. 
Uh, for example, let's say we have a 74 LSO4 uh, inverter chip. Okay? And a terrible drawing here. Let's say this is in a oscillator circuit. Okay? Well, <clears throat> and we have our power and we have our ground connected. Okay? Now, let's say the output of this 74 LSO4 is going through a resistor to ground. Well, let's say this is a high frequency uh, pulse on the output. Okay? Believe it or not, it's a possibility to have some inductance. Yes, inductance, because this is an, a, a pulsing circuit. Now, if I were to put a capacitor, now, now keep in mind, on the circuit board layout, this could be considered a coil. Okay? So, if I were to put a capacitor, a decoupling capacitor right here, it will short out that high frequency right here, nip it in the bud. Okay? But if that was not there, and instead I put the capacitor way over here, remember inductance is directly proportional to the size of the coil. So now I would have more, more space to have inductance, and, and this will create voltage spikes which will go all the way back to the power supply. So this is the major reason for decoupling capacitors. Okay, I know what to say here. Let me... Uh, let me explain it like this. Here's a new piece of paper. <clears throat> Let's talk about your power supply. Okay, most arcade machines originally came with a linear power supply. Some came with switchers, and uh, the replacements are switchers. But um, your linear power supply would have AC coming in. Okay, so you have AC, and you usually have a full wave bridge rectifier. <clears throat> which would look something like this. Excuse my uh, sloppy artistry here. And that's going to convert that to DC. But the DC that it's really going to convert it to is not a smooth, perfect DC yet. See, it's going to look like It's going to be coming in pulses like that. Okay. Now your power, your filter, filter capacitor, which, for example, if you have an Atari, would be your big blue, your major one, I should say. Uh, what that's going to do is, is that is going your highest point is going to charge your capacitor. Okay. And now your capacitor has storing energy, just like a battery would. Okay. And so, what that's what that's going to do is going to fill in the gaps. So instead of that hump, these humps, it will be a solid line. So that will, that's uh, that's your filter capacitor. Okay. Now from from after after this capacitor, now you have clean power, right? Well, remember how I said those wires act like kind of act like a like resistors. They're not they're not really nothing is really zero ohms unless it's a superconductor, you know. Um, so, or, or damn near zero ohms then. And so, since there is a resistance between where the last chip on the board is to here, um, <clears throat> that's why you need decoupling, decoupling capacitors. Now, um, you could go with, with large caps everywhere, but the decoupling cap capacitors are small for a reason. It's because they, um, the frequency that these, uh, uh, ICs are switching is a higher frequency than this. Does that make sense? And so the, the, the average decoupling capacitor might be around 0.01 microfarads because that capacitor absorbs that energy. Now, when a voltage drop were to happen on, from an IC being switched, it would take some of the stored energy in the decoupling capacitor. And if that power line were to get a spike of energy, it would have some resistance in charging the, de de the decoupling capacitor. So the reason we have decoupling capacitors and DC circuits 
is to stop is to resist a change of voltage does that make sense so if you have a crazy change in your voltage on your power rails then chips can malfunction but uh, yeah that's about you know what let me talk about coupling capacitors for a second uh, which are often used in uh, analog circuits or uh, amplifiers and so on now our decoupling capacitor is is much like our filter capacitor right but in an AC circuit it would be like this and what does this do this if you were to put DC to this circuit it would charge it to a point and stop okay but since the since this is since this is AC it'll charge it and reverse and charge it and reverse or if it just charge 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 and it'll um it'll allow AC to flow through but it will not allow DC to flow through does that make sense okay in AC circuits a coupling capacitor uh, can be used for for meant for for to block DC but it can also be used to couple specific frequencies uh, for example a large capacitor will take longer to charge and discharge than it would for a smaller capacitor a smaller capacitor would take we would charge and discharge quicker okay so um, the specific frequencies if you had a low frequency a large capacitor might match the lower frequency better than a smaller capacitor often it, it, it's, in other words they will couple it better um, so specific capacitors will couple specific frequencies better than other capacitors so uh, for example um, they sell these little capacitors so you can put in your car audio if you, you know for your, for, your, uh, for your radio and they 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 block the base and you, you put it in, uh, in series uh, in line with the um, with, with one of your speakers it'll block the base a low frequency but allow the high frequencies the, the mids and the highs to go through now check out these sockets have you ever seen clear sockets before? <clears throat> I think that's kind of cool. Well, when I ordered these clear sockets, I didn't understand what they were, why they were clear. I just thought, hey, cool, clear sockets. But um, now that I've ordered them, uh, I, I looked, at the, I looked at the data sheet, and I noticed that um, these sockets are water soluble, which is, which is so weird. Um, can, can one of you guys, you know? So in other words, this this all this plastic will dissolve when I wash the board when I do when I do when I do the final wash. Um, but uh, interesting, can one of you guys explain to me why you'd need this? I mean, I have a few ideas, but I don't even think it makes that much of a difference. But hey, but anyways, what I what I really want to talk about is often you can buy sockets with a decoupling capacitor built in. This is commonly your five volt your five volt line. This this pin far pin here is commonly your ground. Let's see how there's a a bus bar connecting to that and a bus bar connecting to that but often you can buy uh, these, these sockets with a decoupling capacitor built into it now what you see here is not there are not decoupling capacitors um, it's kind of stupid um, but I think it'll be cool um, what I did is uh, under all these clear sockets these all the clear sockets I used on this Omega race board were for are for the 2114 RAM and I bought the clear sockets and I put LEDs behind it because, you know, I personally think it's cool. You know, it's totally pointless. But, you know, that's what I did. And uh, so now I'm going to have to wash these and remove all the uh, plastic. But oh well. But anyways, I hope that helps some of you guys out. Um, yeah, I know uh, I know it's kind of stupid, but I kind of wanted to pimp this board out. <laughs> so I bought the best of the best. Uh, all, all the best parts, you know. But anyways. I hope this, hope this helps some of you guys out, and uh, have a good one.